Hey everybody, it's Teach from SeriousGas.com. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today it's all about the FabFilter Q3. And as you can see, I'm being joined in the studio by a couple of uh, avid fans here. This is Pippin the Wonder Dog and uh, the Queen Dragon, Pimini the Cat. Ooh, you want that? Ooh. <laughs> They're a lot of fun. So don't mind their tails as we do the review. All right, so this uh, Q3 is my favorite plugin of the moment. I love this thing. It has become ubiquitous for tracking and mixing for me. It's so easy to use. It's so easy now to find offending frequencies in any of the signals or instruments that I pass through this thing. So uh, I just wanted to show you how excited I am about this thing and get you to use it too, because really I, I just don't think there's a better EQ out there that has as many options for you. Which, of course, the more options you have, the more you're empowered, right, to do strong cutting and boosting and carving out your signal to fit the mix. So the first thing we're going to do, I, I called up uh, Pro Tools here. You see that. And uh, what I did was just a couple hours ago, wrote a quick song, uh, got my fretless out, and just did a quick tune on that and then layered some stuff on top of it. I'll probably go ahead and use this for the <laughs> backing music on some video so in the future if you watch other videos listen you'll probably hear this here's the uh, quick song I did all right so as you can hear it's nice upbeat it's springtime in Michigan. We're finally getting some warmth now that it's April, and uh, I guess I'm in a happy mood. <laughs> so we're going to let that keep going. Uh, to show you the Fab Filter Pro Q3, the first thing I did here that you see is on the fretless track. You'll notice that I have a low pass filter. And uh, if we just click on that, it brings up all the information we need to see. I can even go ahead and headphone that using the headphone signal and just hear the fretless track. What you hear, by the way, is not the fretless track that you recorded, but the fretless track you recorded minus the EQ changes. Or I should say plus the EQ changes, right? So you're not hearing the whole signal, you're only hearing the signal as it's passed through the EQ and then afterwards, right? So with that, you can really hear what you're doing and how it's affecting the sound. Uh, frequency gain cue, that's all here in the control panel. I can also change the shapes. We've got all of your standard shapes. Bell, shelf, cut, all the standard stuff that you would expect. And you can see that because it's yellowed, you can tell that I've got a high cut on it right now. And uh, we don't usually find tilt. Um, that's something that I had not worked with ever before, so we'll show you that uh, by going to another plugin. Let's go ahead and do that on another track, I should say. So we're going to switch from the fretless bass uh, now to the Paul Reed Smith guitar track. Because on the Paul Reed Smith, I also had to do a little bit of EQing to get it to match and to play nicely with some of the other tracks. So let's take a look at that. All right, so here we have the Paul Reed Smith track. Let's bring that up where you can see it. Now you notice that I've already gone ahead, if I click on this, we see all the different shapes that I could possibly put as far as EQ. Now I've gone ahead and put on high pass, which is typical, right? We want to get rid of all that extraneous low frequency junk. And so I did. You also see I did a little more shaping here, however. Um, and that's because I was comparing it to some other instruments and I wanted it to have its own little space right here but then I wanted another instrument to shine through right here. Now how did I know that? Well obviously I use my ears but on the Pro Q3 there's another great reason and that is you can actually see it. Let's uh, go down here and I'll show you what I mean. If you go down to the analyzer page and I'm gonna click that so it stays up for a while you've got you can set it pre and post you can also name your track there look what else we have however all of the other tracks that I have Q3 on it's showing me their spectrums at any given moment what live is coming through there 
So right now, there's nothing being played on the chorus lead, because we're not at the chorus. Uh, but on the verse lead, you can see the EQ is working and applying the cuts and boosts that I wanted on it. Now that's gone. Now that we're in the chorus, you see that happening right there. If I just go to here, you can make some changes on speed, resolution, range, tilt, etc. But check this out. This is the first thing I really want you to see. It's collision time, and oh, it hurts. <laughs> the red line that you see here is reflected if there are places where there are frequency collisions between one track, one instrument, and another. So if you've got some serious overlapping going on where maybe you want to separate them so that in the mix it'll be cleaner and clearer, the red lines show you exactly where that's happening. So I immediately use that as soon as I have a few plugged in. I go check and see if there's any buildup uh, that's going to make that happen. Let's actually bring this page down and just take a look. Right now in white you see the channel that you're on. So this Pro-Q3 that I have up right now is for the Paul Reed Smith. So that's what we see, but look behind it in red. What do I have? Well, if we go back to this page, you notice that I, in yellow, I've clicked on the verse lead. So that means that in red back there, we were seeing the EQ perspective of the verse lead, and we can compare them. And we can also see if there's any red buildup. Let's do that. So right here, you can see that that's happening. Now that's exactly where and why I put this dip in. I cut right there on the Paul Reed Smith so that the synthesizer could have its little moment in the sun right there without the Paul Reed Smith interfering so that the two of them would be clearer. Very cool tool and I use it all the time, especially right after uh, when I first start a mix or even during tracking if I want to check. For example, if you're going to lay down a guitar part and there's already something there in the same frequency spectrum, you can choose the pickups that you want to put on it based on how well it kind of sits away from some of the other instruments and sounds. So right from the get-go, as you're tracking, you can make choices that in the mix will end up giving you clarity. Love that. All right, let's turn that off and now go to this little arrow here called the Spectrum Grab. And uh, as you can see, I've got the Help button on for you today. If you hover over anything in Pro-Q3, it will give you a very good explanation of it. So as you can see up there, it says if you enable it, you're gonna, it'll automatically enter Spectrum Grab. The EQ bands that are there will be dimmed while the spectrum freezes. So let's turn that on and I'll show you exactly what that means. All right, so if my uh, cursor is anywhere up here, nothing different is going to happen. You're going to see in bold white or gray the Paul Reed Smith signal that I've got on this track. Shadowed down here, you're going to see what we've EQ'd out. So this signal is the Paul Reed Smith, but because we put a high pass filter on it, that's the Paul Reed Smith part of the signal that is being cut dramatically. But watch what happens now that I've clicked on the Spectrum Grab button when I enter the frequencies. Look at that. It starts to give me a real-time buildup of the EQ spectrum, which enables me to see, uh, for me, the biggest thing is, are there any offending frequencies that are spiking too high? Um, like this one right here, you know, that might be one that I want to get rid of because I want another instrument to inhabit that space. So because of this spectrum grab, I can see it, I can go to that offending tip and drag it down. So now if I go back up here, you see that we have notched out a cut right where it told me there was a frequency that was kind of all alone out there and probably in a part of the mix where I want something else to shine in those high frequencies. So very, very helpful. All right, we're going to turn that off, and now we're going to go to this final button that I call the snowflake <laughs> because it's the analyzer freeze. We're going to freeze some frequencies here, people. If I put that on, 
it's very close to what we just looked at. Let's go back. And it's playing. We can see the Paul Reed Smith signal. But instead of showing it real time, all that we're seeing now is the buildup of frequencies over time. So we can let this song play from the beginning to the end. And when we get to the end of the song, we will have this silhouette, this EQ silhouette, based on all the frequencies that that signal produced. Are there any spikes? Are there any lows? And so at the end, we can say, wow, look at this one over here. That one's really kind of sticking up. So why don't we just kind of bring that one down, right? And you can do that. Now behind, you can see also, because we still have the verse lead highlighted there, you can see that that's behind, and you can compare it as well. So those are some really, really cool features that uh, make this, again, my favorite plugin of the moment. I'm going to go over a lot more in detail on uh, part two of this series for the Q3, especially dealing with EQ Match and how I love to use that. So make sure you stay tuned for part two of that. Come on back to our YouTube channel. We're always putting up great new videos about new gear, old gear, the gear we love, because it's all about gear here at SeriousGas.com. If you liked what you saw here today, then please like and subscribe. And don't forget, I've got a link right below this video to the SeriousGas.com very detailed post that goes into even more detail than I gave you here in the video. And we'll talk about the company Pro Q3 and some other things. So make sure you check that out as well if you want to know more. Or check out any of our hundreds of other posts on many, many other things. Guitars and basses and mics and basically all the stuff that we use here in the studio to make our music. It's all great, isn't it? So this is Tej from SeriousGas.com and Pippin and Pimini saying go make sound.